Today on Forbes, the AI chip boom saved this tiny startup. Now worth $2.8 billion, it's taking on NVIDIA. Jonathan Ross's first inkling that something was wrong came back in February while he was speaking to a host of Norwegian parliament members and tech execs in Oslo. Ross, the 42-year-old CEO of AI chip startup Grok, was in the middle of a demo he hoped would vitalize the languishing company, an AI chatbot that could answer questions almost instantaneously, faster than a human can read. But for some reason, it was lagging slightly. It unnerved Ross, who was pitching a Grok-powered European data center that would showcase the specialized chips responsible for those super-fast answers. He recalls, quote, I just kept checking the numbers. People didn't know why I was so distracted. The culprit was an influx of new users. A day before Ross's Oslo meeting, a viral tweet from an enthusiastic developer raving about, quote, a lightning-fast AI answer engine sent tons of new traffic to the online demo, buckling the company's servers. It was a problem, but a good one to have. To clear up any confusion, Ross's Grok, spelled G-R-O-Q, is completely different and separate from Elon Musk's AI chatbot Grok spelled G-R-O-K, which is made by Musk's company, XAI. When Ross founded his Grok eight years ago, his idea was to design AI chips explicitly for what's known in the industry as, quote, inference, the part of artificial intelligence that mimics human reasoning by applying what it's learned to new situations. It's what enables your smartphone to identify your dog as a corgi in a photo it's never seen before or an image generator to imagine Pope Francis in a Balenciaga coat. It's quite different than AI's other computational suck, training the massive models to begin with. But until OpenAI released ChatGPT in late 2022, touching off a global AI frenzy, the demand for superfast inference was limited, and the company was limping along. From inside the startup's semiconductor lab in San Jose, California, Ross recalls one low point in 2019 when the startup was a month away from running out of money. He says, quote, Grok nearly died many times. We started Grok maybe a little bit early. But now, with the demand for computational power to build and run AI models so intense that it's contributing to a global electricity shortage, Grok's time has seemingly come, either as a potential noisemaker or acquisition target for the legacy chip giants. On Monday, the company exclusively told Forbes it raised a monster Series D round of $640 million, vaulting it to a $2.8 billion valuation, up from $1.1 billion in 2021. The round, led by BlackRock Private Equity Partners, also includes Cisco Investments and the Samsung Catalyst Fund, a venture arm of the electronics giant that focuses on infrastructure and AI. The need for compute power is so insatiable that it has spiked NVIDIA's market cap to $3 trillion on 2023 revenue of $60.9 billion. Grok is still tiny by comparison, with 2023 sales as low as $3.4 million, and a net loss of $88.3 million. This, according to financial documents viewed by Forbes. With the AI chip market expected to hit $1.1 trillion by 2027, Ross sees an opportunity to snag a slice of NVIDIA's staggering 80% share by focusing on inference. That market should be worth about $39 billion this year, estimated to balloon to $60.7 billion in the next four years, according to the research firm IDC. Ross says, quote, Compute is the new oil. Challengers like Grok are bullish because NVIDIA's chips weren't even originally built for AI. When NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang debuted its graphics processing units, or GPUs, in 1999, they were designed to run graphic-intensive video games. It was serendipitous that they've been the best-suited chips to train AI. But Grok and a new wave of next-gen chip startups see an opening. For full coverage, check out Richard Nieva's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.